Hello everybody. In this video we're going to talk about standard states and standard enthalpy changes. So we can understand these concepts by referring to a simple mountain altitude analogy. So imagine we have this mountain here and this mountain has an altitude of 3000 meters. So in order to define the altitude of something we have to define that altitude relative to some value that we can all agree is zero. And the value of the altitude that we all agree is zero is going to be the height of the sea level. So in other words, this mountain is 3,000 meters above sea level. So that sea level is basically like a standard. It's a zero value to which we can compare the altitudes of other mountains, maybe other buildings, or any other really tall object for that matter. And so when we talk about standard states and standard enthalpy changes, what we're talking about is defining a zero to which we can compare enthalpy changes for chemical reactions. And so that standard for enthalpy, in other words, that zero value that we're looking to define, is composed of three parts, and it's much, much more complex than, say, defining a standard of altitude as sea level. Now the three parts associated with this standard that we're going to figure out for enthalpy are as follows. The first part is what we call a standard state. The second part is called a standard enthalpy change and that has the symbol delta H with that degree sign up there. And then the third part is going to be the standard enthalpy of formation which is delta H with a degree sign and also a subscript of F which stands for formation. And so the first part is called a standard state. So what is a standard state? Well, the standard state of a substance depends on what state of matter in which that substance exists. So if your standard state is for a gas, then that standard state is going to be defined as a sample, a pure sample of that gas at exactly one atmosphere of pressure. If you're talking about a standard state of a liquid or a solid, then it's going to be a pure sample of that liquid or solid in its most stable form at the temperature of interest, which is most commonly taken to be 25 degrees Celsius. And finally, if you have a substance that's dissolved in a solvent to make a solution, then the standard state of that substance is one in which the substance has a concentration of exactly one molar or one mole per liter. So now we have defined these standard states for all these different substances. Now the second part of that standard for enthalpy, that zero value, that you know thing that we're trying to compare to the zero, the, the sea level sort of analogy, is the standard enthalpy change. So the standard enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is going to be the enthalpy change for a reaction in which all reactants and products are going to be in their standard states. So in other words, all gases have a pressure of one atmosphere, uh, all liquids and solids are in their most stable form, and of course anything that's dissolved in a solution has a concentration of exactly one molar. Now the third part of that standard for enthalpy is called the standard enthalpy of formation, that delta H subscript F with a degree sign up there. And the standard enthalpy of formation for a pure compound is going to be the enthalpy change when one mole of that compound is formed from its constituent elements which are in their standard states. And finally, the standard enthalpy change, or excuse me, the standard enthalpy of formation of a pure element in its standard state is always going to be zero. So those are all the necessary parts of that standard for enthalpy, that zero value to which we can compare everything. Now when it comes to figuring out the standard enthalpies of formation, uh, it's pretty much already been done for you. Scientists have already done this and they've collected those standard enthalpies of formation and tabulated them into tables. So if you look at the back of your chemistry textbook, there will probably be uh, an appendix that has standard enthalpies of formation for a bunch of different elements and compounds. And so that's what we're going to talk about uh, in just a minute. So let's look at this question here. This question says to write the equation with the elements in propane, C3H8, in their standard states as the reactants and then one mole of propane as the product. And then we're going to include the value of delta H of formation for this equation. So again, the product of this reaction is going to be propane, C3H8. Propane in its most stable form is going to be a gas. And then the two reactants are going to be the two elements that make up propane, which are carbon and hydrogen. 
Now notice how specific the state of matter is for carbon. It says that carbon is a solid and it's the graphite form of carbon. So there are other forms of carbon. For instance, uh, another form of carbon might be diamond. But graphite is a much more stable form of carbon than diamond is. So we are not going to use diamond. The most stable form of carbon in its standard state is going to be the graphite form. So for this one, it's quite necessary for us to be very specific about the type of carbon that we're dealing with. Uh, one thing that we must do with any chemical equation is to balance that chemical equation. So we have three carbons on the right. We're going to need three carbons on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and stick a coefficient of three in front of that carbon on the reactant side. And then on the right side, we have eight hydrogens. We're going to need eight on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this H2 molecule by four. And that'll give me eight hydrogens on both sides. So we've written the balanced chemical equation for the uh, formation of propane with the elements that compose propane in their standard states as the reactants. Now the last thing that we need to do is include the value of the standard enthalpy of formation for propane. And the, the way that we're going to find that is by referring to that table that I mentioned earlier. So there are several tables online. Uh, there's also going to be some tables in the back of your chemistry textbook. And so this table here is just part of a table of standard enthalpies of formation. So in the column on the left, we have the formula. And these are just the formulas of uh, several different forms of carbon and carbon containing compounds. And then in the column on the right, we have the standard enthalpy of formation, which is in kilojoules per mole. So all we need to do here is to find propane, that's C3H8. So I've just found propane, it's right there. It's gonna have a standard uh, enthalpy of formation of negative 103.85 kilojoules per mole. And so that's it. All we have to do now is to include that value, that negative 103.85 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward. I hope this video helped you out. Uh, the next video, we're going to go over some more information, and we're going to talk about using standard enthalpies of formation to calculate delta H values uh, for actual chemical reactions that don't necessarily need to involve the formation of compounds. So, and that's a pretty useful tool uh, to be able to use. In, order, in other words, what you can do is you can actually predict whether an act, a reaction is going to be endothermic or exothermic uh, just by using tabulated standard enthalpies of formation. So you don't actually have to break out the beakers and flasks and test tubes. Uh, you don't even need to run the chemical reaction at all. You can just do it by looking up information in a book, which I always thought uh, was pretty amazing. So stay tuned for that video, and I will see you later. All right, goodbye.